here you see a disc and a torus. The disc is cloth. I made it cloth by FX and cloth create cloth. And the torus down here is a passive collider. So the cloth feels the torus. I've showed that in different tutorials before and there are many other tutorials about end cloth from other people which I highly appreciate and um, I just want to ask you while the rain is falling on my roof lovely what's wrong with this simulation well not really wrong but it's what well, it's a little bit odd about this simulation Well, I would say the cloth is a little bit too stiff. It looks like almost be made for another geometry, like another table it would fall onto. There's a reason behind it, of course. Elegant, really. But very few creases here. Uh, the reason behind it is this one. Uh, let me show you the grid. It's a huge, huge torus and a huge, huge cloth. So it's not appropriate for the dynamics of an original cloth. So let's see another simulation now. So the material is slightly stretchy. Of course, this is not real time, it's less than real time. And now you see it falls off. Let's just count the average of the folds here, the wrinkles. Let's have a look from the top. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, sort of. Uh, they, uh, of course, they, uh, they are different when Maya thinks of a different scale size. So let's do this now. Um, we go to the the scale of the scene is a nucleus thing. The nucleus is the uh, the, the center of gravity and dynamic uh, simulation here in the N system, N hair, N cloth, N cash, fields and solvers, etc. Uh, so let's select the N uh, N the nucleus here, and uh, here we have scale. Um, entries here which don't matter for us. It's uh, the standard transform attributes where this object sits in the scene. It doesn't matter for, for the simulation really. But further down we have the scale attributes. They are sitting here and they're currently set to time scale of 1 and space scale of one, uh, 1, 2. So um, when you change the time scale to say 10 the whole animation will go much slower. But this is the space scale we're concentrating on today uh, and the space scale basically says this scene is not showing a torus 2 meters wide but maybe a torus uh, of, a, of a totally a total uh, different scale. Let's enter 10 here now and check out what the simulation looks like now. So I changed the scene scale from 1 to 10, so I made it 10 size, 10 fold bigger. Let us see if we have the same amount of wrinkles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 only. We have less folds here in the tablecloth because the, uh, the space scale is larger now. Let's see how the simulation continues. And you see the tablecloth doesn't fall off. It just swings there much more relaxed than in the, uh, the previous setting. It's still moving a little bit but it won't fall off. The question is, do we want a cloth which is as rough as this? The roughness has to do with this uh, space scale. You might reduce this from 10 to 0 0.1. See, now you get a totally different simulation 
because this uh, the sc space scale is too small now so let's go to 0 0.3 So this is how you make sure that the cloth simulation looks realistic to you. If you find uh, a value of say 0 0.8 realistic enough for you, just stick to it. Does this make sense? Does it look natural? We see we have many many folds here, many wrinkles in the cloth right now because we have a smaller space scale than we had initially well that's all I wanted to show you the basic rule is just play with the value here and try to create your geometry in a ma in a way that if this is a table well yes it's two meters maximum three uh, whereas this sorry um, this table would be a little bit too big here, right? It would be an unrealistic uh, table for a normal setting in a, say, a computer game. Have fun and see you later.